Do we leave you, Steve? Yeah, we seem to have lost him. Yeah. I started recording and then you came back. Ah, oh, the joys of technology, huh? So, guys, you ought to tell you right from the get-go how computer savvy I am. <laughs> I just absolutely muted myself and kicked myself out of the doggone meeting. That's unbelievable. Okay. But you're back. I'm back. Okay. So, let me get this up to snuff here. I'm going to go ahead and get the... How many scout meetings I've done this and I've run the Zoom meetings and I still screw it up. Unbelievable. Okay. Here we go, folks. I'm going to put that window down here. That looks good here. You'll forgive me also. I'm, I'm actually kind of watching how things are going on a uh, notebook computer, just making sure that the presentation is working for you all. So, Anyways, and of course, I've got a visitor already. I feel like you're going to have to go somewhere. Okay. Anyways, welcome. This is the Dive Judge training session. This is for all you wonderful veterans coming back. You're donating your, your precious time to help out our divers. So what I want to do real quick, just give a, a brief overview of what I know about or a little bit of history of the league. Some people don't know this. Um, our league was actually born out of the Montgomery County Swim League. Um, Montgomery County Swim League has records for diving, I believe, go back as far as the early 70s. Um, our first all-star meet was in 1979. But actually, the first, the first year that we were an actual league as MCDL was 1982. And that's as far as I know that the records go back, but that's when our bylaws had come into play. Um, so you get a little idea of where we're at with that. So who, who are we as a league, okay? We are a developmental recreational league. Now that's different some, from some of the other leagues. There are other recreational leagues around. Um, they have different levels of competition, as many of you probably know. Um, there is also national diving, uh, there's MDC and various other leagues that do national diving and some uh, higher level league uh, diving. There is also what I'm very much part of and Dave Stark is, uh, as I mentioned, the rules interpreter for high school diving. Uh, the rules there are a little bit different but not so different that uh, judging and the criteria are, are that much different. So. Our diver base does consist mainly uh, of many of the different diving levels because we've got a good mix of those just starting out, just learning uh, the sport itself, and all those with more experience. But the beauty of this league is that it's open to pretty much any student athlete that wants to try it, no matter what their skill level. We always manage to find a place for them to go ahead and come in and compete and have fun with it. So that age range, when I put down four to five years old, you know, there have been the four-year-olds that have been, I'm, I'm waiting for the two-year-olds to start signing up. Who knows the way, the way the world is going, these kids are getting younger and smarter a lot sooner, you know. Anyway, so our approach to diving as a league, very basic. We're a little bit different. Um, we designed this league to make competing easier for those beginners, but still... We do base our criteria on those same standards. We may tweak those a little bit, but uh, for the diving, um, the, the same standards uh, for the diving, uh, and we apply the rules uh, the same as we would for advanced diving. So as a judge, you will apply those same standards. You're gonna be consistent, you're gonna be fair, you're, you're, that's what you're striving to do, to make sure that you keep yourself consistent and fair at all times. So, so how does this all come together? So there's many folks that have a job here. Mainly they are you, the parent volunteers that help out. Um, of course, we have the coaches. The coaches are paid for what they do. They're paid for their services. 
and we as a parents and others are the support and we're the volunteers so you here tonight are the judges you're volunteering your time to support the student athletes I think it's important to emphasize that because that's why we're here we're here about our student athletes and how we are supporting them this just happens to be one of those uh, sports that allows us to do that um, coaches in particular and the reason I bring this up the coaches are there they serve as a guides and role models for their students of diving so we as a parent volunteers we support them you know to support goodwill and you know for all to enjoy uh, the diving and so forth um, my emphasis and I'll get to this later is that hopefully our coaches are focused on just that uh, and pretty much nothing else you want them just to focus on our student athletes and take it from there um, various jobs we have here um, and I list all of these table workers announcers referees and of course you all the judges a panel judge all of you are officials so when it comes time for these dive meets and so forth you are in a, an official capacity so all of the folks that are involved here need to, to take the time to make sure they focus on whatever task they're being asked to do I realize you're volunteering but we need to make sure that everybody is doing their job and they're focusing and keep in mind they are officials in some capacity or another the emphasis here being um, when we talk about the referee and the judges who are in the chairs the referee is that head official he, he or she is going to be the person in charge of all dual meets divisional meets and all-star meets but I'll clarify that also you as a judge you're going to be part could be three of you or five of you uh, there's never going to be an even number of you uh, and also if you run short for whatever reason it is you know and who knows what the challenges that are coming up you know getting everything restarted this year hopefully there will be enough of you the judges to be there to serve in that capacity so again the coaches can serve and do what they need to do everybody I hope understands that okay moving on now the dive judge so uh, you know, as part of a judging panel your job is to evaluate a dive that is performed at that moment dive judges need to have bad memories and the reason I say that is you want to evaluate that dive at the moment as you see it score it like you see it then move on and don't think about what you scored two three four dives ago or last week your job is to focus on the one dive at that moment and make your evaluation based on that and we'll get to your tools of what you're going to be doing with that so how do you become a dive judge okay this indeed is one of those few sports you can come in here you don't have to have a bunch of prerequisites or special training uh, you know you just have to have a willingness to be there to help out and to understand the rules and methods again to be a fair consistent and effective judge of individual dives not grouping it up or anything like that you're looking at that one dive and you're you're just going to call it like you see it so experience of as a judge uh, you know it's not mandatory obviously we've got newbies coming in but practicing your craft and and gaining more experience certainly will pay off and that's what we're that's what we're hoping for um, now moving on um, so your basic responsibilities as a judge I lay it out very simple for you and your preparation um, hopefully all of you had an opportunity to revisit the MCDL handbook in particular uh, the pages that do apply to you those are pages 15 to 22 in the handbook and that's the current 2019 handbook which is on the MCDL uh, website I've got the website uh, there listed I'm sure all of you know what it is um, pages 15 to 22 and 32 to, th to 37 if you're a referee you're going to have to know pages 6 through 37 which is going to be a little bit more detail but the only things I ask that you all 
concentrate on are just those that have to do with the judging. There's some administrative uh, parts to this and so forth. You should not have to worry about that. What you need to focus on is just, just serving as the judge. Again, being fair and impartial at all times, okay? Always, you're always going to be uh, judging the dive and not the diver. This is where this thing about memory comes in. You want to forget who it is that's on the board. You may have seen that person before. It doesn't matter. It's a new dive. It's a new day. It's a new moment. Make sure that you reset the brain and make sure that you are going to evaluate the dive appropriately preparing yourself and it will not matter one iota who that person is stepping on the board i've always said it could be my own kid on the board does not make a difference i don't know who that person is all i see is a diver up there and what is that diver how what dive are they going to perform and how well are they going to do it and again call it like you see it and you go from there and again, I emphasize here also, I put this in here, expect to mess up. We're all human. We're going to have our moments of screwing up something. And I've, I've lost track of how many times that I felt like I've blown a call or something like that. But that's also why you're part of a panel. It will happen. And that's okay. This is the human element. It is completely subjective. You simply call it like you see it. And don't dwell on it and just make your call and move on. Okay, so what is the dive made up? As you all know, there's four basic elements that make up the dive. And all of these four elements that we have, at least in our league, is what we consider in, in judging and scoring the dive's overall quality, proper form, and grace. What you're looking to do is to make sure that when you see I performed have they met all the criteria for one thing and how aesthetically pleasing and how well is the technique and so I'm hearing some echoing sorry okay so the basics on how a dive is scored we do have the four parts. In our league, the four parts, very similar to other leagues. Other leagues actually have five parts. They consider the starting position. We don't do that in this league. So we have the approach and takeoff, the flight, which is where all the positions come into play, and then finally the entry. So those are what you're going to be focusing on, what your criteria of your scoring is going to be based on. So. The different dives we have, we same as any other league that, that, that have these, we have our listing of dives that we use. We only use the dives that we have listed in our handbook, which is a combination of the MCDL dives and some of the FINA dives. They're all listed, and I'll get to that. I'll show you what I've got with that. So forward dives are all the 100s. Back dives, 200s, reverses are the 300s, inwards are 400 and all the twisting dives that apply here, the 5,000s. Nothing magical about that, okay? Also in this league, we do have lineups. Lineups, uh, we have a forward lineup and a back lineup. In other leagues, they call these fall-ins. These are the ones that have no press, no push. The divers are simply working on a skill. For the lineups, they're gonna be standing on the end of the board. There is no running starts or approaches to this. They're simply on the end of the board. They stand on the end forward, they fall in. The back, they stand on the end of the board like you're doing a back dive. They simply fall in. Part of the reason this got implemented in is because there were several of the young divers from years back where we had issues with, well, are they even doing a press or are they just falling in? Well, we know there's a skill involved in this and how they learn control and that's part of why we have that and we've made the separation and distinction there to make sure that we're emphasizing again we're trying to develop the divers from the ground up so we have tools here that allow us to go ahead and uh, and give them some teaching here okay 
I'm sorry, I'm just taking a moment, taking a quick look at the uh, at the uh, the chats here. Okay. Also, we have the jumps, uh, and many of you already know about those. That's a 100 forward and the the 200 back. Again, those are those are set up um, with with the jumps. Uh, the forward jump it, it can have uh, a forward approach, you know, a running start that can happen. Um, but the back is just like a back dive. It has to start on the end of the board with the back space in the water, and it has to be you know take off from that point there. But the jumps, yes, they can treat it like an approach, like a regular dive. Nothing wrong with that. It's just going to be some key elements there as to how they go ahead and finish that dive to look for. Uh, again, nothing surprising there for you guys. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about body positions here as they apply to this, a straight body position. So the body is not bent at all, okay? The body is straight, you know, it's straight at the hips and the knees. There's no bending. Um, the, only, the only other criteria to that, if you look at this, this silhouette, it does rather clearly show that what this diver is doing here can arch the back a bit, that's okay. As long as you keep the feet together and toes pointed and so forth, and they keep it clean, the arms can be outstretched in front, out to the side, the position of the arms doesn't make any difference. As long as when they go into the water, they've got the hands out in front, above the head, and then they're fine. So that's a straight position. That's where everything stays straight, but yes, they can arch their back, nothing wrong with that. Okay, a pike position, a little bit different. That's simply bending at the hips or the waist, and the legs are straight at the knees. What you will catch on to is sometimes some of these divers, and we'll show that in some of the videos, where as they're going into the water, their knees collapse a bit. And that's where they do what we call a break in position. So those are little things you'll be looking for. But by definition here, it's bending at the hips, at the waist, keeping the knees straight, the legs straight, and keep the feet together, toes pointed. Again, this is part of what you're going to see as being the perfect dive. Okay, tuck position. Okay, just to be clear on what a tuck is supposed to be doing here, you can see just clearly in the silhouette how this, this diver is doing this. The, the tuck, the body is bent at the hips and the knees. They're, they're compacting themselves into a nice tight fit. The legs are together. Those knees are together. The toes are pointed. You should have the hands as they're doing their rotation, should have their hands cradling the front of their legs as they're, they're completing their rotation, however many it is, and then come out of that cleanly. And then as they go into enter, Keeping in mind, all entries are going to have to go in as vertical as possible. That's what the expectation is. So when all their, these folks are doing their, their dives and they're doing their flight through the air, all that business they do upstairs, above the board, from the time they leave the board before they enter, they need to get all their rotations and all that business done. Hopefully, if they have enough and their, their, their hurdle and takeoff and have enough enough flight in the air to do whatever they need to do. There's going to be a lot of differential in this league. You're going to see that. But as long as they get all that business done up here, straighten up, going as vertical as possible, that ideally is what they want to have. Okay. Now, body position here, when we're talking about uh, the free position, technically speaking, a free position isn't a position itself, but it is listed as such because it, is a, a, it incorporates all three positions that we just spoke of, the straight, pike, and tuck. And yes, there are certain dives that in the twisting dives, they'd be prohibit, prohibited from using a tuck position. Most of these are gonna be done with a pike position or a straight position and so forth. Uh, again, they're, they're working these things where you know, the, the legs are gonna be staying together toes pointed, especially when they're entering the water. They want to go in as straight vertical as they can. The other point I put on here, and, and I, the reason I put this on here is because in the 2019 All-Star Meet, I, I had to make that very tough call 
when there was a young diver who was trying to do a twisting dive for the first time. Why it was done at an all-star meet, not sure, but that's how it happened. The problem is you started that twist on the board, and in our league, unfortunately, if you start that twist on the board, it's a failed dive. I'd like to see that rule change because certainly in high school and some other leagues, uh, it's not failed, but there is point deductions, which probably makes more sense to approach it that way. Um, but it's worth noting here when we're talking about body position and the free position, twisting dives and so forth. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along here. So just so you see, here, here's a young lady who's going to show you right here what that forward one and a half somersault and a full twist. You're going to see what her technique is like. Let me run this for you. As the takeoff does a rotations, straightens up for the most part and goes in. Hopefully everybody's good with that. Okay. The other part of the equation when we're talking about the dives, and again, this is more administrative stuff, but just so you know, the degree of difficulty, our range in our league goes from that 0.8, which is for the, the jumps, all the way up to a, the most difficult dive we have, which has a 3.9 degree of difficulty. For you as a judge, you don't need to worry about the degree of difficulty in any of the dives. The reason is very simple. I, I, you don't have to worry about how hard a dive is. What you just need to know is what that dive is, what your expectation is, and how they're going to perform that dive, and do they meet the criteria. The calculations and determining what the final score is going to be and all that, that's for the good folks at the table to figure out. And it's also for the referee and the chair to make sure that when it's announced, it is the correct multiplier that's going to be going with the dive scores that that diver is about to get. But for you as a judge, you don't have to worry about it. But again, worth mentioning. Okay, so if you're interested to see all of the dives that we use in this league, now this is my version of the combined tables. I put this all in numerical order. And what I plan to do is, and I've asked, I asked Nathan a couple of years ago to go ahead and put this on the website, but he decided to use his own. But this is a simple two-pager here, which all of you can grab off the, the website, or I can send it out. You guys can do this back-to-back, -back and you can laminate it, have it on the pull side if you choose to have that. In fact, I've given out a bunch of these at divisionals and so forth, so hopefully a lot of the reps still have these things. Um, but as far as I know, everything's up to date. I think even considering if, uh, you know, the, the good phones of inter uh, folks at International Diving or, or FINA have decided to change the formula a little bit, but I'm not aware of it. So, and the other reason I like to go ahead and, and have this out here with all the numbers that are clear on here, if anybody has actually gone in to download or have a, a, an original copy of the 2019, um, They'll know that all the dives that we have listed in the back of the handbook, the numbers are kind of skewed and kind of all over the place, and I guess the printer was having a bad day. Um, somehow the, the InDesign fonts and so forth decided to have a hiccup when they went to print. But in any case, we do have this. I make it available to anybody who wants it. I'll make sure I get this over to Dave and Teresa, we make sure we put that on the website. I encourage you to go ahead and get a copy of this. Okay, very simply, just explaining the numbers here for all those, just, just a refresher here, like for the 103C. The one is just talking about what direction they're facing, but we're facing out, that's a forward approach. And then the third number here is gonna be how many half rotations. Well, that's three half rotations, makes it a one and a half somersault. And of course, the C is going to tell you what position it is. That's a tuck. So uh, same goes on the twisting dives. You know you're in the 5,000s. You know they're part of the twisting category, that first position. I apologize. I stole this right off of the PDF, and I clipped off the word direction. So again, that 1 on the 51 there, the 5122, uh, is simply what direction. That's a forward approach. And then you have two half rotations, so that's a forward one somersault, and then the last number here 
is how many half twists, and that's going to be a full twist dive. So that ends up being a forward one somersault, one twist, and a free position. Now, the other trick here, and the other reason I bring this up for you as you're judging the twisting dives, this may seem like the simplest dive to go ahead because it's just one twist and it's only one somersault. If you look at those last two numbers, you determine is it an odd number or is it an even number. If those are even numbers, whichever way that diver started, in this case they're facing out to the water, that's the way they're going to be facing when they hit the water. If it was an odd number and this is a 5121, you would expect them that they're only doing a half twist, they're going to do a full somersault, but they're going to be facing back towards the board. That's the little simple mental trick you keep in mind especially when you start looking at those twisting dives. Make sure you, you, know, you, you see that, and that's the easiest thing. Because there's going to be some of these kids who are going to do 5134s or something like that. I've even seen that 5135 or something along that line. They can do it. The more talented divers will do it. And you got to be prepared to see that and know how many somersaults is going to happen, but more importantly, how many twists. They're going to know if they've done enough twists and so forth and they're facing in the right direction. But your little cheat there will help you maintain that so you know what you're looking at. Okay, now the scoring scale, this was changed a few years ago. Well, maybe not so long ago, maybe 2017, 2018. Um, this is actually in line with actually with high school in uh, FINA, National Diving. So nothing really surprising here. We just simply emphasize that if you get the perfect score, it's an excellent score. We, we give that to 10. Very good, down to good, satisfactory dies. We'll talk a little bit about deficiencies and so forth. Um, we'll touch on those. Um, deficient dives, there's a lot of these things where there's dives that are mandated by a referee call that will prohibit you from scoring anything further than a four and a half on whatever score, however way you may have judged the dive, however way in your mind the quality of that dive is, there may be a deficiency or an infraction, as I like to say, that the referee in doing their job is going to call and then maximize what that score is going to be. We'll touch on that in a little bit. And of course, there are the unsatisfactory dives we'll talk about. And there are a number of reasons why you have a failed dive, Not, not I guess not too many, but um, there's plenty of them to talk about. So we'll touch on those in a bit. Now, your critical standards here for judging, okay? Again, remembering you're doing all four, all four parts of the dive. You have, to, you have to incorporate in your mind all four parts of that. You can even consider that approach is when they're doing a back dive and so forth. That still technically is an approach. It's just a different approach. It just doesn't have a running approach but we'll touch on that as well. Um, um, again, you're not considering the DD of a dive. I brought that up. You don't have to worry about that. It's, it's about what the dive is and are they performing it correctly. You know, and also, you are to provide that fair contest at all times. It doesn't matter who it is you're judging. should not matter at all. you got to keep yourself focused and make sure you're being fair and you only call it like you see it. I cannot stress that enough. You owe it to the kids. You, the kids are going to expect you to do that. There may be some of those who kind of pull you aside and say, well, why'd you give me this or that or whatever? You know, well, you know, it may be your own kid or something. I don't know, but try to not have too much of a problem with that. Um, but it, it shouldn't matter again. The diver is just that person that's on the board at that time and you're evaluating the dive no matter who it is, okay? And of course, you're going to be looking for those deductions as they go. You go from picturing what you think is a perfect dive and then you'll look for whatever deductions that may apply as you go along, okay? Nothing really uh, fancy there. Now, without getting into great detail here, because again, I know this is a veteran group and I don't want to I don't want to bog you guys down too much, but again, um, just reminders here. Um, again, motions, uh, going up to the starting position and getting ready and before they assume and you know they clearly set a start position, you don't worry about any of that and you don't worry about anything that happens once they've 
gone below the surface of the water. None of that matters, okay? Starting position for the standing dives is gonna be right on the front of the board, body straight, head up and erect, the arms straight, but they can be at the choice of the diver. They can have them all the way up here, they can have them down, they can have them out to the side, they can have them out front doing the zombie chase or whatever it is, as long as they've got their arms and, and whatever the position is, it'll be their choice, that's fine. As long as it's smooth, it's consistent. And if they want to do some arm movements as they're starting their oscillation on the end of the board, that's okay too. Um, and we'll talk about os oscillations as well, okay? So, um, again, the forward approach, you're, if they want to use a forward approach, um, that's fine. The running dives, um, that is when the diver has set. And the divers may set. They don't have to set, start at the back end of the board. They could be anywhere in between. As long as they're going to have at least one step on their approach before the hurdle. By rule, that's all they need to have. They can have two or three steps. They could have you know, a run at it or so forth. But if a diver doesn't, if he doesn't have, uh, doesn't come to a full stop and showing that they have a set position, you as a judge need to start dinging them. Because there are some of the kids that get a little antsy and so forth, they get on the board and you never see them set. So right from there, if they get up there and they kind of circle around, they haven't really set, established their starting position and they take off, you as a judge need to consider taking points for that. Okay, that standing running start, it, 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 if, if the diver makes an obvious attempt to do an approach or a press or something like that and then stops and then restarts, that's a balk. That's going to be a referee call. And hopefully the referee calls that. But if a referee doesn't call that, you as a judge certainly are within your rights to do point deductions as you see fit. But clearly, anything that where a diver starts and stops, and we've seen that on the end of the board where they're doing a standing takeoff, where they look like they're, they're, they're ready to go up, and then they bring it back down. There is going to be that clear distinction. You'll see it. It will happen. That can be considered a balk as well. But for that, I'd probably give it the benefit of the doubt to the diver without making too big a deal. And of course, if a diver ends up balk, doing a balk twice, they don't, after that, they don't get to continue to dive. It's a failed dive and they move on, okay? Again, you want to incorporate, um, they actually, I, it's not a minimum two sp steps. I, I reread that. It's actually, they have to have a minimum. If you have less than one step is how we have it written in our rules. So as long as they do at least one step before the hurdle, then they're fine. So I'll need to correct that, okay? The takeoff, uh, on the hurdle is going to be from one foot. So that means they're hurdling up on one foot. When they come back down, they need to land on both feet, not one foot. That becomes a safety issue. They need to make sure they come down on both feet and they are contacting the end of the board. You as a judge will be looking to see where that diver ends up landing. Some of the things you'll, you may catch on to is going to be some of them where they end up back from the end of the board when they're supposed to be right on the end of the board. So look for those things. That's all part of the dive to make sure they land on the end of the board, not, not back from the end. That's not good, okay? So that takeoff from both feet, if they're not doing it from one foot, that's a balk as well. Again, we will look up in the book, you'll see more clear definition, but that's basically it. Those are just the essential rules there, okay? The takeoff, okay? So this is after the approach and you're leaving the board, okay? It needs, excuse me, it needs to be forceful, it needs to be smooth, and the diver has to show confidence in what they're doing. That's what you're looking for. Again, the takeoff to hurdles from one foot, land on the end of the board with both feet, as I just mentioned, okay? So it doesn't matter if they're doing a standing or running approach. Um, but the thing to consider here, when you're judging how much height is going to happen for a diver, it's going to be a big difference, especially with the little ones. A lot of them, you know, you know, precious souls that they are, they're all, they're not used to doing a running, a running start with a hurdle, and so forth. 
but when they do learn that, part of that is to get them a proper bounce and a height because more height is a much better dive. They're able to get more accomplished. Just keeping in mind what we're looking for as judges, we, we are looking for that height. Are the divers getting high enough? It's kind of hard to say because it's very few and very far between that you have, excuse me, you have divers that are able to get enough height doing a standing approach. So you as a judge need to make sure you keep that in mind as you're evaluating the dives, okay? Now the flight through the air, okay? Now this is, as I said, this is where all the positions come into play, okay? And as I mentioned, you know about what the straight position is, leg straight, body straight, no bending at the hips and so forth. And this is where the referee will step in. If they see that they're coming in, and we'll see that in some of the dives we have, if there's any break in the knees, if there's any break in the hips, the waist area, and you see that, you as a judge, you look for that. But it will end up being, if the referee is doing their job and they see that break, even the slightest one, technically it's supposed to be called. But again, you can give the benefit of the doubt to the diver, that's fine. But you as a judge, if you see that, you can kind of work your scale as you see fit. If they've broken into a different position, going from a straight maybe to a pike or something along that line. Because technically, if they're breaking at the knees, they're breaking into a tuck position. Even though it might be one of the ugliest looking tucks you've ever seen in your life, um, technically speaking, that's when you have a break in position there as well. Again, pike position, you're bending at the waist, okay, at the hips. Knees are straight all times, toes pointed. And again, that, that also is where a referee can call a four and a half point max. But you as a judge, if you see anything, a slight break, if you feel like that is enough and the referee doesn't make that call, you can go ahead and implement that into your score. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly legitimate. Okay? So tuck position, same thing here. Now the body is bent the, at the hips and knees, as you know, okay? The one criteria here is yes, they need to make sure that their toes are pointed as they've got themselves balled up and so forth. The other thing that seems to get missed a lot is when these divers do that cowboy thing, that means their, their knees come apart. They need to make sure that those knees are together, a good tuck, an excellent tuck is where they're going to put those legs together. Those knees are as close together as humanly possible. I understand there are plenty of divers out there who simply don't have the physicality to pull their knees together. I can't even remember the last time I was able to put my knees together without calling 911, but anyways, that's another story in itself. Um, but point being is that... Um, that is what you're looking for. That's what they're striving for. But if they're getting lazy and they're trying to get, you know, good divers are going to use that. And, and especially in international diving, they're doing that to get that quicker spin and so forth. The, uh, the parents here who have the, the national divers know exactly what I'm talking about with that. Okay. Free position. Okay. Um, use and all the, you know, and all the, the twisting dives, but actually that is not correct either on that table that you, you can look over. Not every, not every twisting dive has a free position. Some of these dives only allow you to do a straight position. Some of these will only allow you a choice between doing a pike or a tuck, where a free position is not an option. Um, but there are these particular dives that we have here and I list these in the book. Um, there actually is probably three other ones that are listed in the book, other than these four that I have listed here, where these tucks, the, the tuck may be used in that free position when they're executing uh, this twisting dive. Um, but there are three other ones which it seemed kind of redundant to put them in there where they said it's okay to use the tuck position. Well, that's because it actually lists the tuck position as one of the options and it's not a free position. You're either doing it as a pike or a tuck. But anyways, look at the, the, uh, the list of the dives and you can get up to speed on what those are and so forth, okay? So 
bottom line is that there are the tuck is for a lot of these dives you're not allowed to use it in a free position on a twist so um, and the judges should be seeing that uh, more importantly the, the referee ought to catch that and cap that dive at four and a half point max hopefully that does happen um, okay I guess I got a miss misspelling in here somewhere anyways um, You'll forgive me, folks, if I'm missing the chats. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take a moment and just see if there's anything here because I'm sure you all have some questions because I'm not really I'm not seeing everybody's face here. But give me a second here. I want to take a quick look and see if there's there's any. Uh, oh boy, we got a whole list here. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Da, 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 da. Okay. Please explain difference in divisional. Okay, um, we'll talk about the difference between divisionals and all stars. We'll get to that. Um, I need to make this a little bit bigger so I can see what's going on here. <laughs> hey there. Steve. Hello. Hi Steve. Yes. Hey, uh, I uh, an idea. Would it be more efficient? Would you like me to monitor the chat and just at every, um, I guess like we can have a break in every for example when we talk about the flight through the air once you finish with the break i can read all the questions for you i can ask the questions on behalf of everyone that's fine but okay. i did i did it did catch my eye on the one uh somebody did ask a question about the scoring if a referee does cap it at four and a half is that where you start your judging scale no you at all times, no matter what, you're going to judge your dive exactly as you normally will see it, no matter what the situation is. Because you may actually be looking at a dive and it may be it turn out to be an unsatisfactory dive, and that's how you call it. But you also may be thinking it's a better dive. You maybe you want to give it a four and a half, give it a five, and it has whatever. There may be something that the referee may catch and tell you. Okay, you may think it's a four and a half or a five, but the most you're allowed to give is two. So you, you again, you score dives as you see it. Hopefully, um, whoever had asked that question, they understood that, um, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm not sure why it's still showing that chat window. Um, Are you all still seeing the chat window? Are you all still seeing the chat window? Uh, no. No. All right. For some reason on my notebook here, it seems to be showing this. We're oh, seeing your slide. Sorry, down. that's me. <laughs> hey, you just have to open it up for yourself to watch what's going on. Right. My bad. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure that I got all that covered. Okay, everybody is good with that, with the preposition there. Let me go back to this. Okay, now, um, so, again, where all the activity is happening is all the positions are happening in the flight through the air. Okay, so a couple of the calls can happen here. The referee can call an unsatisfactory dive and instruct the judges to award no more than two points max if the dive is performed clearly in a position other than what they're supposed to. So we have a distinction here. You've got completely in the wrong position. And then the, the next thing is where it would be called a deficient dive where they have a clear break in position where they're not quite going all the way into a different position but they're leaning enough that the referee will see that and say it's a deficient dive and instruct all of you as the judges to do no more than a four and a half point max. Hopefully that's clear enough. Again, the arm positions and so forth and the flight um, is completely up to the diver. That's during the flight. That's a difference between that and the entry. Um, so a couple other points here, as I brought up before, on twisting dives, you cannot start the twisting dive on the board. If you do in this league, that's considered a failed dive. There are some divers that unfortunately will try to do that. Maybe they are the ones that are just learning it, and then some veterans somehow they lose their head and they, 
they end up doing that. But it can't start the twist on the bore. Those are just some basics there. So it's also a failed dive. If you have a dive that's not twisting enough, if you have it less than 90 degrees, if you know if they're doing a, a, a 511, a 5111 dive, and that is a front dive, half twist, and they're coming up and they're just, they're going into the water and they haven't quite, once they touch the water and they haven't quite broken 90 degrees, that's still a front dive. So they've done the wrong dive. And that's what that's based on. And if they over twist, if they've gone past 270 degrees, that's a failed dive. That means they've over twist. All these things about over twisting and under twisting have everything to do with the diver ends up completing a different dive. You complete a different dive, you've done the wrong dive, it's a failed dive. Straight up, shouldn't be any question on that. Now your entry, very simple, okay? Should be as vertical as possible, should not be too far away from the board, and it should not be too close to the board either. They need to make sure they, they when they do their takeoffs and they're up in the air, do all their business, they're coming down as vertical as possible. That's what they're looking to do, okay? I say three to four feet from the end of the board is good. You just don't want to have them. You're going to get some of these kids that are going to be doing back dives where it's going to look like they're doing a torpedo launch. You know, they simply are not going up off the board. They're simply going out, and they don't get enough height. That goes into the deficiency category, and you're going to see a lot of that with the young divers um, that are just figuring out, just learning how to do a back dive. As they progress, they get more arch and they're able to do more with it. Um, so make sure with their the head first entry, make sure those arms are stretched out all the way up above the head. It should make it very clear that they have their hands up. Hopefully they have them together. Some like the you know kind of the prayer mode, but a lot of them have their hands together as such and they go on and, and dive in with their hands clearly above the head. You got to make sure the safety issue, they, as they're going head first, they got their hands up here where it belongs. If they're kind of close to the head, they don't really have the hands in the right position. They need to be out front. They need to be outstretched and out front of them. Um, feet first entry, and except for the jumps, I put that in there, the arms are held close to the body. They need to be down on the sides. That's where they should be. I've seen some kids with their arms up here. If they've got them up here, they've got them in the wrong place. And obviously, if they've got them up here, it's the wrong place. But jumps are okay. They're doing a jump. They can have the hands up here. Whether they're doing a front jump or a back jump, doesn't matter. The arms can be in whatever position they choose. They should either be up or they should be down. They shouldn't be out here. That's really not a good form. They need to have their arms in a good position with respect to the body. Okay, hopefully that's clear enough, okay? Um, some of the entry no-nos. Again, um, the referee is going to declare that four and a half point max if one or both arms are above the shoulders here. If they're up here, they're in the wrong place. You can make your argument about whether it's going to be shoulders or head or whatever. The point is, if their hands are up here, one hand or another, they're in the wrong place. So it's going to get called. It should be called. Hopefully it is called and kids will learn from that. But again, if it's close, benefit of the doubt always goes to the diver. But again, the hands shouldn't be up here. That's not good, okay? Referee's gonna fail that dive on a head first entry. Uh, if the feet end up hitting first, meaning they're the wrong thing, sometimes they're doing something where they're doing a somersault. A lot of the kids trying to do a double and they just don't get enough height and they're trying to get the spin. Sometimes they actually throw their hands down to their side for a feet first entry and technically their hands hit first. Well that's either a very unsatisfactory dive or it's flat out failed. But you as a judge and also the referee should be looking for that. But you as a judge just see where that is. So if they're balled up and they're not coming out of it, it's going to be an unsatisfactory dive at a minimum but the hands have to be in the right place. So if it's hands, if it's supposed to be head first, the feet can't go in first and vice versa. If the feet are supposed to go in first and the hands somehow are down there, 
where they shouldn't be and they hit first, that's failed. Simple enough. Okay, so other calls here, keeping in mind the referee is always authorized to have a dive repeated. There could be all sorts of different circumstances and it, it's not the fault of, of the diver at all. It just happens. Um, the announcer could screw up and call the wrong dive. You know, things get out of order can happen. But in any case, if the spoil, you know, the dive is wrong, it's performed wrong, and, and the diver wants to have it repeated, the diver asks, not the coach. Okay. Again, that's more of a technical thing that the referee should be handling, but it's just some food for thought to think about there. Um, other calls that happen that you'll see um, assisting a diver, and again, these are calls that the referee should be calling, and maybe they don't get called, but they need to get called. Um, if you're assisting a diver during the execution of a dive, meaning they've already started and are moving, and they're giving some kind of verbal assistance or whatever, that's a failed dive. Can't be doing that. I don't. I haven't. I haven't seen that in years, and you probably won't see it either. But still, it's a rule. Um, if there's assistance given while the the diver is getting in set position or something and being talked to, <coughs> all the way up to the point before they set their position. They can be talked to all day. That's fine. There's no issue there. But if you have a diver that goes ahead and gets set in a particular position, and the coach says, hey, you're in the wrong position, um, and they go to correct that, that technically is a ball. Again, that would normally be a referee call, but again, worth noting. Um, so quick summary here. I don't think I have to bore you down with this. You know, the zero calls, meaning the failed dives, Wrong dive performed, assistance given, diver refusing to execute a dive or ends up falling in the water if they fall off the side of the board. I've only seen that happen maybe once, uh, but it can happen, but that's the call. So obviously that's not the right uh, thing having. Over and under twisting, we touched on twisting on the board. We talked about incorrect head feet entry in the box. You do two box, failed dive, two point deductions here. Diver takes less than one step. See, I got it corrected here. Um, less than one step on a running approach before the hurdle. The start, stop, restart, again, that's a clear balk that you'll see. Hopefully that referee catches that and calls it. If they don't, you make the call. Uh, take off from the hurdle from both feet. That's a problem. It's supposed to be from one foot. And then a diver assumes incorrect starting position and is verbally corrected. Again, that's a balk. We just talked about that. Okay. Four point max, we talked about with the arms above the shoulder. On the feet first entry, jumps excluded there. Improper use of the tuck position, meaning what we talked about with the twisting dives where tuck is allowed in some and not all. Um, diver partially out of position. Again, that's a breaking position. That's a deficient dive. Should be a referee call. Two point max, as we talked about, wrong position. Uh, diver not making a sincere effort to come out. And I know Doug Beavers has made this thing, he kind of made a joke out of it over the years about, well, what's a sincere effort? You know, the reality is that you can simply go by the fact that if a diver has not had enough height on whatever they're trying to perform, you know, whatever somersaults, and they simply don't cut out, come out of that before they hit the water, that's where I draw the line. If I see anything that's an inkling that they're trying to come out of a tuck or a twist or a pipe, or whatever it may be, I will certainly give the benefit to the diver. Some, I've seen that where they've been inches from the water and all of a sudden they kick out. Maybe a really lousy dive, but they did make the effort to come out of it. But that doesn't mean that them being here where they're supposed to be kind of turned vertical going in, uh, you know, vertical into the water and, and almost look like they're parallel to the water before they hit, um, but then they technically touch their hands in first where they're supposed to. That's probably no more than two points on that dive anyways. But again, that's up to you as a judge to decide what that's going to be. That's ultimately your call. Some of your calls here, your judges' calls, these are yours. The half to two-point deductions. Again, we talked about the tuck position where the knees ought to be together. The excessive rocking on the board. If you get a kid there that's taken like an entire minute and oscillating on the board, that's a bit of a problem. They need to, you know, do a few oscillations and move from there. I know in high school we have it defined. I don't know that we really have it defined here in this league, but if you're doing too much of it, that's kind of a problem. You as a judge need to start knocking points on it. 
Um, and the other thing that the good divers do, um, they do a lot of crow hopping. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, the more seasoned divers, the more talented divers will implement that to get more height. Um, I've always said that as long as they had control and they're not bouncing all over the board, I try not to pick on that too much. But technically speaking, if you're crow hopping, those are supposed to be point deductions. Regardless of how gorgeous that dive may end up being and so forth, those are things you have to consider. Okay. The other thing too, even though, and I say arms not in the correct position and entering the water, the arms may be technically up here, but if they're not like together and they're kind of out here, but technically they haven't violated anything according to the referee, you look for arm positions and so forth. They just shouldn't be out here to the side or whatever it may be. You as a judge should be looking for those things when you're implementing your calls. Okay. Um, the jumps talked about a little bit here um, and again the jump can be implemented they can either do a running for this 100 uh, front front jump they can either do it running or standing either way is fine okay but just that when they're doing the standing gotta make sure they're in a vertical line and there has to be a press on the takeoff and they need to make sure that when they're doing this whether they're doing it running or standing and so forth and they're going up their flight through the air. They need to make sure that they're keeping that body straight. The one thing I do want to emphasize about these jumps is to make sure that just because it's a jump, don't feel like you can't get a perfect jump because there are some kids that do it so well that they really have strong consideration for getting a 10. So think about that. There is a very good jump and a lot of kids do it. If they execute it well, score that accordingly if it's if it's that good don't be afraid to use that old scorecard okay back jump again that has to be done in the back standing position body stays straight and so forth and then when they push off and they go up hopefully they're not pushing out they want to push up as high as they can to get as much height as they can and they come back into the wall of the water as straight as possible again doesn't matter where the arms are they can be up they can be down it makes no difference. That is totally fine. It's a choice of the diver. Okay. Judging the lineups. Um, doing the lineups is a little bit of a, a tricky thing. This is something we've brought in uh, over the last few years. This is more of a skill. And this, is, this has everything to do with whether the kids are actually having a press on the end. Having a press um, when they're doing their dive whether they just fall in because a, a, a front lineup and a back lineup is supposed to be um, no press at all. That's what we look for. Now, if you have a situation there where um, you have a diver, a diver listing to do a front dive or a back dive, and they end up going up there and doing a lineup instead, that is something the referee will identify and say the diver did a lineup and then instruct you as the judges to go ahead and score that accordingly and then you go from there and they'll also instruct the table to change it to the correct dive the lineup to change it from a dive to a lineup is the only time you don't ding a kid um, for doing the wrong dive that's the only exception to that rule where otherwise it would be failed but we don't want to get too hung up about the lineups. Basically, what you're looking for, did the kid fall in? And as long as there's no, no press on, on their entry and their fall in, okay, that's the key to look for. Okay? Um, you're judging scoring deductions. We talked about the box, what they are, the false starts, what, what concept two false starts, two box that's failed. Um, the break in position, shoulders, incorrect, and so forth. That's just a summary. The crow hops we've already talked about. And again, I put in here about control being a factor. I've already touched on that when it comes to the older divers and so forth. Try not to pick on those too much, but technically you can ding them for that. Okay, so what does this all mean? Altogether, this means with a complete dive. What is the complete dive? Very simply, and you know this, okay? 
it's just it's when the diver establishes that set position and you know they've established that set position that's the beginning of the dive and they go through all four elements that make up the dive okay until the entire body the entire body passes below the surface that's the end of the dive that's all you're looking at you're not looking at anything before you're not looking at anything after okay i know i'm being redundant and i've already said this but it's one of those things you just want to make sure you have that implemented and you're thinking about okay so here we go so you've got all your tools here right and when the diver is ready to go you need to be ready to go too so when you're on the deck and that diver's on the board and that dive is getting announced you're ready to go so okay so what were we doing again you're going to get the dive announced to you and you're going to picture in your mind what that dive is supposed to look like. You want to know, just take that moment and you should take time to look at all the dives that may be going on, all the common dives, front dives, back dives, all that. What constitutes in your mind to be that perfect, excellent dive? Think about that for a moment because, and you're going to have to do it quickly because that's all part of the deal here. You get that in your, in your mind frame. Is that approach going to be right? What's that? What's that takeoff and hurl going to look like? What's that rotation? Where should it be? Is it up here? Should be. What do you see is it going to be? What should it end up being? When you have that in your mind, you're going to focus. You focus, you make sure you're ready to go, and your attention is completely undivided and on the dive that's about to happen. Okay? So hopefully everybody is ready. Because here... If you're ready to go ahead and look at this dive and score it, and I want to open this up because I want to get everyone's take on what they think this dive is and what score you would give, okay? It's a 103B. It's a forward dive with one and one half somersaults in a pike position. Take a look at it and tell me what you think. You can put it in the chat or you can shout it out. Okay, folks, what do you think? Eight and a half. Okay. Others? Seven. Okay. What do you consider the deficiencies of that? Why isn't it a perfect dive? You didn't go in straight. Okay. If it happened so quickly, can we see it again? I can back it up. And that's the point, folks. You're going to be seeing these real quick. <laughs> right? That's part of this. You know, I can sit here. Look, here's the reality of it. Okay? I can, I can play these all day. So, again, what do you think? See, I have the luxury of playing around with this. See, I can back this thing up. I can say, uh-huh, here we are, here we are, and back this all the way up here and see, okay, what did he do? I'm going to back him up again. Look, I can just kind of walk him through. There's one step, and he, look at that. He, uh, <laughs> there he is. He's right at the end of the board when he's doing that hurdle, and yet what's he doing? He's gone straight up, coming back down on both feet, Pretty good location. What do you think of the pike? It's a good pike. Yeah, not bad. A lot of the pikes are done that way. Some like that, you know, they might take the back of the legs, but I think they're taught to go ahead and just bring those hips, bring those knees, and almost punch themselves in the nose. You know, some kids could actually do it, and that's kind of scary. And I, I don't mind saying that I'm long past that possibility. So, anyways. So good rotation, he's coming down. So he's coming out of it kind of late, but still he's already made the contact with the water and that's still pretty straight. So that's not too bad. Now, if you see this guy right here in the back of his skull, that happens to be your, your the, the, the Mr. Know-it-all of the night here. And I couldn't tell you exactly what I called there, but 
I probably would have given him somewhere in the for this competition, he probably got somewhere between a six and a half and a seven. He's still out from the board a bit. Um, but look, you know, in our league, if you see things like that, you, know, you can pretty well award that. But again, critique this as you see it. That's what's important. All of you judges are going to have different opinions on how you see that dive and how it's implemented, okay? So moving on here. And we've got plenty of other dives we'll look at. In fact, I'm going to do this real quick because I know we're running out of time here. Okay. Again, considering you considered all four parts of the dive, the approach, takeoff, flight, and the entry. Okay. And you ask yourself that question very quickly. Did they meet your criteria? Okay. You want to evaluate that dive. Evaluate it quickly. Make sure you go through all that. Did they hit all the criteria? Did they do all of them, some of them, or none of them? That can happen. You determine that score, you're ready to give that score. And when you're given the score, you're going to make sure you're in a position to do that very quickly when the announcer calls for it and you move on. Okay? So the scores are announced. No news here. The announcer is going to make sure all the scores are going to be read in the same chair order throughout the meet, no matter what. That saves a lot of confusion because that's also the benefit for you so you can listen in to make sure that the announcers have made sure that they have read your score correctly because sometimes the situation comes up where they mess up. Okay, here's your scorecards there. You know, I've got mine floating around. Oh, here we are. But I got my scorecard here. Um, I don't know, you know if you all can see me or not, but anyways. Um, got the flip card and so forth. So we get a chance here, I'll just go over that real quick, but um, same standard scorecards. Tools for you guys to use there, again, the handbook, you can download a copy of that, uh, a PDF copy of that off the website. We also have that worksheet on the website, you all can use that, okay? Um, some of the do's and don'ts here, again, you want to make sure you're consistent at all times. Make sure you're, you're keeping your consistency throughout, you know. Don't worry about if you've gotten a little bit high or a little bit low or something like that. You want to be consistent through each round. It's it's the how you keep it fair. If you've gone into it and you felt like you're a little high or a little bit low in your scoring for that round, that's okay. Adjust it after that round is complete and go from there. Okay? Hey, this um, is David. Just want to give you a heads up. We're at um, 16 after. Right. So we'll start the next. I know. Week. I had a feeling I was going to run a little bit long here, but I'm going to try to get through this real quick. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, again, you want to make sure with the scorecards, you're using every bit of it. Don't be afraid to throw a 10 if you see it. You know, and don't be afraid that you're going to, um, you know, show up a referee. If a referee misses a call and you think a dive has failed, fail it. I will emphasize that to any meet that I am serving as a referee in. You don't have to worry about hurting my feelings, and you shouldn't have to worry about hurting the feelings of anybody taking on the role of referee that day. We're human. Sometimes it, it happens. You're going to make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Move on. Go from there. Okay? So some of these other things I'd like to show you visually, um, the whole things. Um, scoring late, that's a no-no. You don't want to wait and go peeking around looking at somebody else's score to see what kind of score you're going to throw. you got to make your own score. You call it like you see it. Okay? Very simple. Okay? Scoring early is not good either. You don't want to go throwing up scores early, trying to show it in front of people, like showing off or something like that. Um, you want to make sure that you only show your, your scores when you're asked to show them. Okay? And don't go adjusting your scores to others and so forth. That's not a good idea. You want to make sure that you are, you know, you just, again, you just call it like you see it. Um, when I get a, get a moment here and do a visual here, I want to show you all the, uh, um, the term. You all know what I'm talking about, dropping a two. I probably don't even have to explain it to this crowd here. You know, you're holding up that scorecard. And you're, you know, you're kind of holding back. You're, you're showing a five, and you kind of look around. You're hitting the scores, and all of a sudden you drop it down. You're adding to it because you end up being a little bit low. You know, again, whatever score you got, just score it, live with it, move on. Okay. So there's always those fun distractions that end up happening. Okay. 
And the one thing I've always saw was a big headache was people and their cell phones. And I don't, I don't know what it is. You guys are serving as officials. You need to put those phones away and just you know, get them out of the way. You know, if you're on call or something like that and, and you really shouldn't be there, you probably need to get somebody else to go ahead and, and serve as a judge, okay? We say we're not working in a bubble here. Very simply put, you're going to have, you got people all around you screaming, distractions, things like that. They're going to go ooh and ah and all that when you're trying to throw up a score. Again, call it like you see it. You got to kind of channel those out the best you can. There are going to be certain biases you have, whether you purposely are doing it, and some things you don't even realize you're doing it. But you need to work through those things and make sure you're keeping yourself as fair to this as possible, okay? A couple things here, like, yeah, with, you know, this, I borrowed this from Doug, the cuteness thing here. You know, you're not giving points because, you know, there is the adorable diver on the board there. Again, you're judging the dive. Don't worry about all the other stuff there. And then circling back here about coaches, you're, you, you, you may very well get a little bit of grief from coaches as you go along when their job really is just to coach the kids and stick with that. Um, hopefully that's what they're going to continue to do and not focus on did you make the right call or the wrong call. Sorry, got sidetracked here, guys. Um, so again, uh, if you all want, I got a couple more dives. Um, do we want to take the chat questions and then hit a couple more dives and then we'll go from there? Maybe some questions if people want to unmute themselves and then we can do some dives. I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a chance to really keep up with what we're looking at here. Um, Teresa, is there anything you want to call out? Teresa has been really good about um, answering questions and David as, David as well and Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Steve, maybe just, I, I tried to answer those questions and I think Bruce was helping also. Uh -huh. Just to reinforce to make sure that we are right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the maximum, you know, when a ref call a mass of 4.5, uh, uh -huh. that basically the judge is going to give the scores what they see in the dive and the 4.5 that the ref made decision on is for the announcers and the table worker to record and announce the score not for the judge to change their score well what happens is okay no matter what is happening no matter what is happening the judge will go ahead and determine in their mind what that score ought to be if there are no infractions indicated by the referee then they the judge will give the score that they feel that that diver deserves but if there is an infraction and the referee tells the judges you can only give as much as a four, four and a half, that's the most points you can score. In other words, if you think it was a six, but the referee says the most you can give is four and a half, that's what you're showing is a four and a half. But you also may get a call that it's a four and a half point max and you didn't even think it was even worth four and a half, that it may have been only worth a four or a three. That happens a lot as well. You're not changing your scale, but you, you all understand what I'm saying. You're always going to score that dive as you see it. It doesn't mean because he capped it to four and a half that you automatically are going to have it scored higher or lower. It's how you saw it. Again, the key elements here is how the judges see it, how they score it. Plenty of judges out there don't need a referee to say it's a two point max. They might give it a one or one and a half or even a half or something like that. Does everybody understand that? Okay, question, another question is, uh, if the diver hits a board, is that a fail dive or is it deficiency? Okay, that <laughs> should be a deficient dive. That ends up being an unsatisfactory dive in high school, if, if, if I'm correct on that, Dave can remind me of that. but. If a diver hits the board, that's really the discretion of the judge to determine what points. If it's severe enough, hopefully that diver isn't hurt, 
and chances are they may not have completed the dive correctly anyways, but that is a judge's call in this league. You make point deductions according to what you feel it ought to be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop sharing here for a moment. Um, does everybody understand that? Okay. Yeah, and here's a, one last one. It's uh, just to go back. This is from Andrew and Jessica. Buck, mm -hmm. is it a buck if you do a lineup or jump from two feet? Or is that classed as a standing dive? Okay. So the question is, we're talking about a lineup? Buck, yeah, when you do a lineup or a jump from two feet. Okay, well, a lineup's not going to have any jump. A lineup's going to be a fall in. There's going to be no. What they're going to end up doing is that if you've done, if you've done some, if you've done a press, I think is what you're asking. If you're if you're due to do a lineup and you somehow turn that into a dive or a press, okay, that's a problem. You're doing a a rather deficient dive. You're not doing the skill, which is the other side of that coin. So yes, you as a judge need to hit points for deduction, but that is not technically a referee call. That would be a judge's call. If we're talking about lineups and having any kind of press. And on the other side of that, if they list they're doing a dive or a back dive and they end up doing a lineup, that's where the referee will step in and change that to a lineup and instruct the judges to score that accordingly. Does that make sense? Yes, I hope. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, so I think we, we went through all the questions. Okay, you guys want to see a couple more dives? I got a couple more minutes before we get the uh, the refs in anyways. So I'll give you guys an opportunity to go ahead and see a couple more and score them as you see them. You all up for it? Yep. yep. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Have I completely bored you all to tears here? No. Okay, let me go ahead and bring this back up real quick. Um, let me go ahead and share this back again. I'll just, I'll just pick it right. While back. Steve is, while Steve is bringing them up, just to uh, let you know, the uh, dives that he is uh, showing were from the uh, high school state championships in Maryland a couple of years ago. So uh, these are uh, the top twelve high school divers for both women and for men. Right. During yeah, that I, entire I, period. I let I let them know that, yes, you are the source. And again, Dave, I thank you so much for providing these. Um, there is there's a whole library here, folks, and I'm happy to show these to you uh, at some point in time or another. Um, we do have the, the referee clinic that's going to happen from 830 to 9. I wasn't planning on showing any of those dives there. But certainly, I am not against that if... Um, if we can keep the line open a few more moments afterwards, if you all want to come back, we can look at a few more dives. But again, I'm happy to show you a couple more right here because um, I really want to be sure you guys are getting a, a feel for some of the different different levels of quality of diving here. So let's look at this one here and just shout it out. Go ahead and tell me what you think um, is the score for this. Okay, so this is a 103B. Young lady's doing four or one and a half pike. Make sure I got this thing working here. Okay, folks, what'd you see? Seven and a half. Why? Well, it didn't go in straight. Right. Um, That was the one thing that I did see. I thought her form and everything leading up to, you know, her approach, her takeoff, her hurdle, you know, the press and end of the board and her flight was pretty good. I just couldn't figure out why she just didn't what? straighten up a little bit more. That would have been, that would have pushed it into eight, eight and a half easy. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, yeah, we probably hit that somewhere between a, uh, you know, in our league, yeah, that's that's probably a good call. About seven, seven and a half, that'd be fine. Um, young man's doing the same dive here. Let's see how he does. It's the same dive. What do y'all think? Pretty high. 
Oh, I didn't see the landing. I see it again. Yeah. Yeah, it skipped. It skipped it or something. Sorry. Well. I don't think it's you. I think it's my computer. <laughs> Let me play it again. Good approach. Press. Here's takeoff. Good flight. Good rotation. He landed right in the visual with Jim Schweeter, that that judge right there in the front. What'd y'all think? I would say a nine, but was how far was he? Was he about landing as far away from the board as you're supposed to? Nah, he was out a little far. A little far, okay. Yeah, he was out. You know, you, that, that area you want to hit somewhere between three and four feet from the board. So he needed to get more vertical. He had good height, but he needed to he needed to kind of bring that up a little bit straighter. You know, bring it up more of an arch and bring it down. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a young lady going to do this same dive here. Let's see how she does real quick. What do you all think? Good, bad, and different? Not sure? It didn't play all the way through. Didn't play all the way through, really. I mean, it it it. it your computer. Me, it did go all the way through. Yeah, let me see. Get the internet connection. I'm watch. I'm watching it on. I'm just watching it here. Barry says an eight point five, huh? Did you all see that? No. Well, I'm watching on my second computer, and I got to play all the way through, and I'm just doing that on the Wi-Fi. Um, sorry. Yeah, I'd say uh, seven and a half, eight, pretty good. Let me just run forward here a little bit. I want to try to hit. A, I know we've got some of these, some of these other divers in here that are qu probably quite familiar, but also want to show like this, um, um, a back somersault, and this is a straight position, a 202. Just kind of look to see if she holds that position. See what you think. This is a back somersault straight. So what'd you see? Was she straight? There was, there was a little bend in the hips. Not much. A little bit of a break in position there, wasn't it? Now this young lady doing the same one. See how she does. I realize we're up against the clock here, folks. What do you think? A little, a little better? Later, but good. It's a little too far. Yep. Yep. Better yep. position a little rotated. All right. Let me do the last one real here real quick. I'm just going to zip through here because I realize I've been absorbing a lot of your time. Again, if you all want to have another session to kind of sit and go through these, I have no problem with that. Um, let me show you just this one here. So he's going to attempt a forward somersault, do a half twist. See how he does with this. A forward somersault with a half twist. What would you think of that? At the entry. It looks a little ugly. Well, yeah, you did do the twist ugly. though, right? It was a little ugly. Let me back that up because this is what you're looking at here, okay? Okay. He's coming off the board. He was okay coming off the board here, and he does his twist up here. And he's only supposed to be doing a half twist. So what happens? He's doing a forward somersault where he needs to be facing back towards the stand. So he's turning himself, but he's really struggling to do it. Where is he at? Right here. He's almost touched. He's touched the water there. And that's his position. So he's not straightened up. He's struggling to get himself straightened up. It's a bit of a problem. Point being is that these things are going to happen quick on these twisting dives. You all are really going to have to have an eye for that. So overall, what did you all think of that dive? Five. Five and a half. four and a half. I wouldn't give him a five. Four and a half. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you we, we half, probably two. across the board gave him somewhere between a three and three and a half. 
on the high school level. Here, you could probably give them a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. So, anyways, um, again, I have more dives and all that you guys can look at, but I don't want to hold you up any further. Um, I hope you all got something out of this tonight. Um, it's again, I probably would have been happier doing this stuff in person. Probably would have been have a little bit better interaction here and all that, but this is this is what we've got. Um, I hope I didn't bore you all to tears here tonight. Um, but for all those who are here for the referee portion, uh, stick around here. We're going to get that underway here in just a couple of moments. And as for the rest of you, congratulations. You're now certified as judges for the next three seasons. Good luck in the season. If you have questions, uh, send the notes out to the board, and uh, we'll go from there. If there's, uh, if there's questions that need to be asked and they need some assistance on that, I'm happy to do it. You all can uh, reach out to me anytime. I have no problem helping out. Thank you. Keep the kids in mind at all Thank times. You. We're doing it for them. You keep that in mind. We're going to do great. Steve. From the board. Thanks, Steve. You're the man. Thank you so much. I'm going to end this recording, but keep the, uh, it going. Okay. And if you're not going to be here for refereeing, please drop off. And anybody who wants to stick Ooh. around, we'll count you on for refereeing. Thank you. Thanks for being here, folks.